Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Constantine the Third here, and today we're going to be talking about the new vein build that has surfaced. I'm talking about the good old Warlord's Bloodlust, Infinity Edge, Static Shiv, Phantom Dancer, 3 item core, 80% crit rate, 1 shot, 1 kill, tumble burst, new build. That has been adopted by many Korean professional players, Gosu, Double Lift, all of them are using this build right now for Vayne. So we're going to be talking about... Is it objectively better than the good old Ghost Blade Phantom Dancer build, or is this kind of the new thing? Well, it turns out, and this is the really exciting part of it, that the build you want to pick matches with a specific playstyle. So now, more so than ever, you can tailor your playstyle with your build to really create an identity for yourself as a Vayne player. Now, what do I mean by this? The Ghost Blade Phantom Dancer build. That build is extremely good at a one-item power spike and a two-item dueling power spike. So if you're the kind of player who, as Vayne, early on is consistently able to make strong trades, able to outplay enemies, dodge skill shots, hit a level 6 power spike early, 2v2 them, get ahead, start snowballing, then don't change your build path then the Ghost Blade Phantom Dancer build is right for you. You are a skilled individual who can take the game into their hands, get in the driver's seat, hit the gas, fuck shit up every game. That's awesome. Good for you. But if you're more of a player who plays like me, somebody who, you know, enjoys taking risks, 1v1s when it's possible, gets in the duels, blah blah blah, but really prefers the security net, the more stable environment of team fighting, objective play, snowballing as a team rather than an individual, then you're going to want to go with the Static Shiv IE build. Now, why is that? Number one, like I said before, the Phantom Dancer build with the Ghost Blade is much better at dueling. You get an earlier power spike with it, you get extra attack speed and movement speed so you can dodge more skill shots against mages, you have the reduced damage to help you deal with, like, dueling a Kha'Zix or something like that, you can use it to just have higher bursts with the armor pen earlier on, it's just more consistent at dueling. But of course, what does the build lack? It lacks large crits, so it's not very good at killing tanks, it lacks healing, which Warlord's Bloodlust provides from the large crits. It doesn't really have nearly as much AoE from the Static Shiv AoE crits. It has worse wave clear. All of these things are things that contribute to being better as a team player. Wave clear helps your mages clear waves during sieges. The healing lets you stay alive longer so your supports can focus on taking care of other people who are getting killed. The healing also lets you dive backline people. The extra crits let you pick off targets Faster. When you're 1v1-ing someone, it doesn't matter how fast you kill them, it's the end result of killing them that matters, since there's no outside contributing force. But in a team fight, the ability to quickly burst someone down is extremely valuable, sometimes much more so than the movement speed that Ghost Blade gives you. And of course, the healing lets you take care of backline divers much more easily. It's actually astounding. When I watch some of these replays of this build, how much healing I actually get from Warlord's Bloodlust. It's mind-blowing. So what are the downsides of this build? Number one, one item power spike is garbage. You're not going to have a whole hell of a lot of power after you finish your static shiv on first item. Really, the build takes off in damage once you have a BF sword, a static shiv, and berserker's greaves. That's when you're kind of, you got the juice going, you know, you're ready to rock and roll. But before that, you're a lot weaker than what you would be compared to the Ghost Blade build. So, number one, you gotta remember that you're just not gonna have that much Drake in comparison. Number two, the high amount of attack speed makes it really difficult to kite. Like, I've been playing ADC for a long time, and I've been playing Vayne for a long time, and it still really hasn't quite clicked with me yet, the exact cadence of last hitting with two zeal items. It's kind of difficult, and if you're having a hard time kiting with just one zeal item, this is going to be a real challenge for you. Nothing that you can't get used to with enough practice, but just be aware that you're going to get into a team fight, and you might even auto-attack slower, just because you're constantly canceling autos, thinking that you can't fire when you actually can. Another issue is the fact that your DPS at lower levels will be much lower because you don't have further of battle. It'll be higher once you get two items, and you'll have more healing, so yeah, the two-item power spike more than makes up for the fact that you don't have further a battle, 
But you still got to acknowledge the fact that early battles at levels 1 through 6 are just going to be harder for you to win because you don't have extra damage. However, I'm not really being fair in the assessment that it gives you a strictly weaker laning phase. It gives you a different kind of laning phase. Rather than having higher damage in your trades against the enemy ADC, you're going to have better healing, which means better lane sustain, which means you'll probably do better against poke lanes. Is that inherently better? Well, that's in the eye of the beholder. So, Fervor of Battle versus Warlord's Bloodlust, I would argue that Fervor is better in lane, but... In a different extent, to what extent? I don't know. It's up for interpretation. That all being said, though, the weaker dueling, the worse early game, the worse one item power spike. For me, personally, as a player in my playstyle, I like this build better. I personally have made a switch from Ghostblade PD to IE Static Shiv with Warlord's Bloodlust, and I am really enjoying it. I've actually won like six or seven games in a row and went from D5 to D4 with it. And it just feels really potent. Every time I get two items as Vang with this build, I feel really strong. Like, significantly more strong than I did with the Ghostblade PD build. So just in summary, if you're a duelist, if you like to 1v1, if you snowball the game really early by yourself, go Ghostblade Phantom Dancer. If you're a team fighting player who likes to be more coordinated and the safety of being with your team and has really good mechanics when you're working with your team and likes to burst people and can get to two items quickly because you're good at farming, then yeah, go for this build. Anyway, guys, I hope that makes sense to you. I hope I've explained these two build paths. Neither is better than the other. It just depends on your playstyle. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it a lot. Make sure to like, subscribe, send this off to your other vain friends, and I'll catch you guys later.